In this video, I'm going to show you how to control time in GDevelop. Let's get right into it. So let's get started. So here I have a basic platformer scene already set up. You can easily set up this platformer scene by getting a player object, adding a platform behavior to it, then getting a ground object, and then adding a ground behavior to it. This is very easy to set up, but I just already have this set up because this is a time control tutorial. But platformers are very easy to set up in GDevelop. So how do we actually add time control in GDevelop? How do we slow down time? How do we speed up time? It's extremely, extremely easy. So first of all, to control time, we're going to be using a feature called time scale. But in order for us to access that, we need to activate it by pressing a button. So I'm going to add a new event and put add condition. Now I'm going to go to other conditions and go scroll down to keyboard, go to key pressed, and since I'm using the platformer behavior, I'm going to set this button as M. This can be any button you want. Just know that it can always work for any single button in um, GDevelop and on your keyboard, really. So next thing I'm going to do is add an action. So when M key is pressed, I'm going to go to other actions and I'm going to put, go scroll down to timers. I think I already missed it. Timers and time. Go to time scale. And time scale is what this is all about. Time scale is what allows you to speed up time, make time go faster, and make time go back to the default timer, which is one. So by default, if you put one, nothing happens to the time scale. It will be exactly default. Now, here's what I want to do here. If we want time to go slower, let's say I want to slow down time by half. I'm going to put 0 0.5 because of course 0 0.5 is half of one. And now let's see what happens when I press M. So when I press M in the scene, everything starts to move slower. I'm still doing everything exactly as it was, but now I'm moving much, much slower. And that's really simple how to add time control like that. And also you can speed it up. Any value over one will make it speed up. So if I put two, the game will move at double speed. So now I press M. Everything is moving faster. I'm moving faster as a player than I normally am. I'm even falling faster, jumping faster, because it's literally changing the time scale of the entire scene. So everything, even if moving objects were on the scene, they'll also be speeding up. Now, I know you're wondering, what if we put a negative value here? If we put a negative value here, let's see what happens. I'm going to put negative 2, for example, and let's just see what happens. I put press M, and nothing happens. And this is because you can't have negative time. Time is always moving forward. So we can't have a negative time and expect it to go back in time or something like that. Time is forever moving forward because distance is always moving forward. I'm not going to get into scientific formulas like I'm Einstein or something. But just know that setting um, your time scale to negative will not accomplish anything. Now I know what you're thinking. How can I use this as more of a useful feature? Like I don't want my... I don't want it to be slow motion forever. So how do we get it out of slow motion? So I'm going to set this back to um, 0 0.5. So we can, well, 0 0.3 is more obvious, so we can test it. And I'm going to put something. We need to make a control so when M key, when the M key is released, then it goes back to the regular time. That's what we have to do. So let's try that for a second. But I'm going to, I know this is going to lead to, like, it's not going to work the way I do it, but... I'm going to just show you this way so you can know what to do if you run into this problem. So I'm going to go to add condition, other conditions, and we'll, yeah, other conditions. Go to keyboard and go to if key is released, not key press, key released, and we're going to put M. And now if M key is released, we're going to copy this, paste, and we're going to set the time scale to 1, which is the original time scale, so it should be back at regular time. Now, if I press it, it actually works exactly like this. This works completely fine. This is very good. This is a very good way to slow down time completely in GDevelop. So just like this, and I'm sorry, I apologize. I don't know why I said um, it was going to mess it up. It didn't mess anything up. But as you can see, we can, when we release the M key, we go back in full motion time, like full scale time. And when we press it, we go slower. So we've made this feature. And that right there is the basics of time control. Now let's say you want to add a few effects to your time control to make it look cleaner, make it look much more interactive, make it look just 
you know, as the boy said, radical. So, how do we actually add effects to make our time control look much better? And by doing this, we're going to use GDevelop's effects. So, we're going to go to player. And just as I'm going to already say what I want to do, our goal here is to make everything go black and white when the M key is pressed. So, we're going to add effect. First of all, we have to go to player, go to effects. And then we want to add an effect. And I'm going to name this BW for short. Make sure you name your effect maybe a short name so you can remember it and easily reference to it later because we're going to need it. And we're going to choose effect to apply. And the effect that we're going to apply is black and white. So as you see, it's right here. And we're actually going to set it as one. We're going to keep it as one. And here's that. I'm going to go to preview. And as you can see, our player is going to be black and white. As you can see, the player is now in a black and white filter it's gray but that's not what we want to happen we want to do that when it's slowed down so let's go into our events and we want to actually add a new event so add a new event and add a condition the condition will be set scene well at the beginning of the scene that's the condition at the beginning of the scene go to player go scroll down to your effects and enable the effect of an object. Now I know what you're thinking, what do you mean enable it? Don't we want to disable it at the start? That's what we're going to do. So enable, as you see, if we check yes, it will enable it, but if we put no, it will basically disable it. So it's doing the exact opposite. So now if I preview now, our player will be red. Our player is now red as it should be. So how do we actually change it to be black and white when we press M? So, we can simply copy this, actually. Copy this uh, um, action right here. Copy. Then go to when M key is pressed. Paste it right here. Now, we don't want to disable it. We want to actually enable it. So, we're going to put the yes for enable. And let's see what happens. So, now, I'm just regularly walking around. I press M. And the player turns black and white. But if I release M, I just released it, it's still black and white. And of course, what we want to do is once again disable the effect. So I'm going to copy this right here, that action again. And when M key is released, we're going to disable the effect. So now let's see what happens. This should work um, completely fine. Yep, if I press M, the player goes black and white. And also, when I release it, it goes back to normal, signifying that we have regular time. Now, how can we do this for the background? And how can we even make an effect on other objects? Now let's start with the background. So our background is like normally this kind of almost a very light, light gray. It's almost white, but not quite. It's just a light gray. So what do we want to do? When M key is pressed, we want to make um it, we want to make it darker when M is pressed. So what we're going to do is go to other actions. We're going to go to scene and we're going to go to background color because that's where the background color of the scene is controlled. So we're going to put the color, we're going to put quotes around here. And if I already had a value set up for this, but just know that it's like in the darker gray scale right here, that's when you get a good color. But I'm just going to try um, 115. I believe that was a good number when I tested it. 115 to 115, 215. And that will make it a pretty gray look when you press M. And also, by default, our seeing color is 209 for red 209 for green and 209 for blue so when we release m we also want to set it back to its default color so i'm going to copy paste it and we're going to change all of these parameters to 209 and for all of them so we can switch back to our original color and don't forget you have to put semicolons to or, um space them out else it won't work so now we have it all right here and when I press M, not only does the player turn gray, but the background also turns gray. And this just really makes the effect stand out a lot. And one more cool effect that you can add with this, of course you can use any effect you like, but these are to me some really good ones that look really good in your games. I'm going to go to the ground and add an effect to it. Now, I don't want to change the ground to be black and white because the ground that we have here is already black. So this is a great example of showing you what effects you can use with objects that are already black or they're already white, because if you add a black and white filter on them, it won't do anything at all. So I'm gonna call this filter blur, because that's what we're going to do to it. And go to choose effect to apply, and then we're gonna go down where we see blur, and we use blur quasi fast. I don't know if I'm doing, saying that right, quasi fast, either way. 
we're going to go to the blur. And don't worry about padding. We don't have to worry about pixelizing. We don't want to do any of that. We simply want to worry about this blur. And I'm going to set it as a value of all the way max to 20. But you can set this as anywhere between 0 and 20 as it says right there. Now, of course, once again, if I preview the scene, we can see how it looks already. It gives it this effect. But we, of course, we don't always want that effect to be there. So, we're going to do the same thing. At the beginning of the scene, we're going to go to the grounds effect. And we're going to go to enable object effect blur. And then we're going to hit no here. When it says enable, put no. Because we don't want to be enabled. Copy it right here. And when M key is pressed, we want to enable we want to enable the blur and once again i'm going to cut or paste it again to when m key is released and we want to go back to disabling it so now let's see what happens i'm going to put full screen just so we can see it in action really much better and when i press m it gives the full slow motion effect and this is just a simple effect you can add with it, it already looks this good it looks it can make your games much more polished just by adding a few simple effects. It's really cool. And that right there is how you add effects to your time control. Now I know what you are thinking. How do I make a time control where everything around me moves slow, but everything will but I at the player still moves fast? How do we do that? Because that's a very common effect in a lot of video games where the player is still moving at regular speed but everything around them is moving slow. So how do we do that? We do that by using layer time scale. Layer time scale. What do I mean by that? That means we set the time scale on a specific layer on a specific layer to be slow, which means it only affects one layer or the layer that we choose. So to do this as an example, I'm just going to have add a new object and I'm going to actually get this from the asset store and I've used this before so I'm just going to search up fat bird, you know. It's just a fat bird, like, it's definitely not the biggest bird, but it's, it'll work. So add to scene, and it's just wait for it to import for a second. Of course, you can use anything you want for this. And I'm also going to add a behavior to it. We're going to go to extensions, and I'm going to search back and forth. Time back and forth movement um, is right here. So I'm going to install it in project, and this is just a simple way to get moving in your project. It's really useful. So I'm going to go to Fatbird and I'm going to add a behavior to the Fatbird. And I'm sorry for calling it Fatbird. That's literally just the name of the object. And the behavior that I'm going to do is time back and forth movement. And I'm going to set the moving distance as like 1000 maybe. 1000 seems right. Not that bad. And I'm going to set the moving speed as 300. And let's see how this looks. So I'm going to drag the bird onto the scene. As you can see, it's really small. I'm going to put custom size and resize it to 100 by 100. And let's see how this looks. Much bigger, much better. And we're going to preview. And as you can see, we have the bird is moving to the right. And then it turns around and moves to the left. So we already have some movement going. Now, what do we want to do? What we're trying to do is when we press M, instead of slowing down the player, instead of slowing down the entire scene, we want specifically the bird to only slow down because that's the object that's moving. So we want to add a new layer. So I want to go down to my layers. If your layers are not here, you can go up to the top right. And this is the layers panel where my mouse cursor is. That's where the layers panel is. But it should be here. So add layers. And I'm going to call this the um, object layer. Because these are moving objects. Well, maybe I'll name it moving so it can... You know, we can remember it better. And I'm going to click into the bird and put the bird on the moving layer. So now what we want to do, we are going to have to change our code up a little bit from how we did it last time. Because if we just have the same code, it would change the entire scene. The entire time to get the scene will be going slow. So we want to change it. So when M key is pressed, we're going to double click into this and we're going to change this. Now, it's not going to be in the time timers and time. We're going to go down to layers and camera. Now we want to switch to change to layer time scale. And this is going to be the layer that's going to be on is moving. And this time scale, we're going to set it back to 0 0.3. And I'm going to copy this and delete. We'll paste it right here, actually. 
and delete set time scale to one. I'm going to delete that. And when M key is released, we want to set this layer speed to one. So it's back to default. So as you can see, this is pretty good already. I'm going to um, go to back to my game. And when I press M, as you can see, I'm still moving as a player at full speed. I'm moving exactly at regular speed as it should be. But the bird is moving very slow. Because we specifically changed the bird's layer to be slower than us. Now, as you can see, also, like I said, how to add effects um, a little bit earlier in the tutorial. We can also add an effect to this bird the exact same way we did the other. So I'm just going to do this real fast. And since you already know how to do this, I'm just going to speed this part up. And now let's test it. So as you can see, the whole scene is turning this black and white filter and we can set this for any type of object we want no matter how it's moving it can be a physics object it can be a platform object it can be ai an enemy it can be absolutely anything as long as you change it on a certain layer only that layer and i mean only that layer will be slowed down or sped up so that's how you change time in gdevelop and also how you add even a few effects to it i hope you enjoyed the video if you like the video please like subscribe and hit the bell so you can always no, be notified when I post a new video. And once again, thanks for watching. Peace.